of the Internet of Things. Is it something that's actually going to add value to your life? Or is it just a geeky software plot to introduce software defects into the physical world? <laughs> I've spent the last couple of years working on this problem, or rather working on the problem of adding value. But I can tell you that my wife has accused me of the latter, of adding software defects into an otherwise defect-free home. It's a very popular term, though. What does the Internet of Things mean? We've heard a lot about that tonight. It's so popular that the Oxford English Dictionary has recently added the definition to the dictionary. Here's what they said. A proposed development of the Internet in which everyday objects have network connectivity allowing them to send and receive data. I have to tell you I was disappointed with that definition. What kinds of objects do we connect to the Internet that don't send and receive data? It didn't seem to add a lot of clarity, but they went on to use it in a sentence, right, to elucidate the meaning through a sentence, and here's what they said. If one thing can prevent the Internet of Things from transforming the way we live and work, it will be a breakdown in security. <laughs> and again, I thought, gee, thanks. Especially as someone who's working in this field, thanks for pointing out that security is going to be a problem. But again, when is security in an Internet world not a problem? So it didn't seem to add a lot of value. And as much as I was disappointed in that definition, I've also been disappointed with this obsession that we as an industry seem to have with counting the number of things that we're going to connect. And the number keeps growing, right? IDC, 212 billion connected devices by the year 2020. That's 30 devices for every man, woman, and child on the planet. And the OECD has a forecast that says that that in Western countries that by the year 2022 that the average home will have 50 connected devices. And it made me wonder, are we, are we committing the typical technology industry mistake, right, of overestimating how quickly things are going to change in the short term while simultaneously underestimating how much they're going to change in the long term? And then I looked at my own house. My house has 132 connected devices in it today. And they run the, the gamut, the complete spectrum from, from lights and locks and thermostats and cameras to, to sensors of all kinds. They're on the wall, they're on the dog, they're everywhere. <laughs> and I can tell you without trepidation that the amount of value that I get from those 132 devices in and of themselves is approaching zero. <laughs> right? That those devices themselves don't actually deliver any value. What delivers the value in my home for myself and my family are in fact the 48 different software applications that are installed into my house. And, that, and that's an important paradigm that we want people to understand that in the same way that you install an app onto your smartphone, that you browse the catalog and find something that you're interested in and install it onto your phone, so will you install apps into your house. And those apps in my house run the spectrum of all these mainstream use cases, but they also do some really edge things, some long tail use cases like automatically feeding the dog if the kids haven't done it. Because I want the kids to feed the dog, but if they forget, I don't want to have to feed the dog. <laughs> or notifying me, we're back to the dog, you, you can tell we like the dog, but <laughs> notifying me if the dog has left the yard so that I can run chasing after him and find out where, where he's gone. Or enforcing a television allowance on my children by monitoring the power output of the switch, of the, of the outlet that the TV is plugged into, and if, it, and, and if the total allowance across all three televisions in the house exceeds a certain amount within an, in a given day or a given week, the TVs get turned off. Or telling me when my wife is at the grocery store 
so that I can send her a text message and tell her what I want her to pick up. Or reminding me that my car is low on gas because the schedule, my calendar the next morning says that I need to drive to LAX and get on a plane and I want to make sure that I have enough time to stop and get gas as I'm notoriously late for the airport. Or finally, monitoring the temperature in my wife's greenhouse in our backyard so that if it actually gets too hot, she knows to go and open it up. Now these are not mainstream use cases. These are not middle of the bell curve types of use cases. And yet, I would suggest to you that, that mass adoption of what we're calling the Internet of Things, which certainly consumers will not be calling it that, but mass adoption, mass market penetration for the Internet of Things is not just dependent on solving for the middle of the bell curve. It's dependent on solving for these long tail, emotionally important use cases because I see value in those use cases. So connected devices does not equal value. Solving real world problems equals value. And the way that we do that is by installing applications into your home. But we need to recognize that my home and my world are very different from everyone else's in this room. And that how I would choose to configure my home is, is entirely different than what you would do. Just as the, the apps on my iPhone are different than the ones on yours. So let's look at this new definition then. What's a good definition for the Internet of Things? We came up with this. An, uh, an evolutionary development of the Internet in which software applications can easily make use of connected everyday objects in order to solve real world problems. And then, just like the Oxford English Dictionary, we went on to use it in a sentence. The Internet of Things will transform the way in which we live and work by making our lives safer, smarter, and more productive, and maybe fun along the way. So what are the, some, of the, some of the real world problems that you might actually run into where the Internet of Things could help? What if you were told automatically that your toddler had opened the cabinet where you keep the household chemicals so that you could stop him from getting into trouble and avoid one of the 10,000 visits every year to the emergency room that result from household poisonings of young, young children? What if your house detected a water leak behind your washing machine and automatically turned off the water valve in order to prevent damage and called a plumber to come fix the problem? What if a wearable medical tricorder could diagnose a heart attack and call for the EMTs and guide them to your location? What if your house detected smoke in the middle of the night and sounded the alarm along with voice instructions for your children about where to go while automatically notifying the fire department and turning on the lights in your home and unlocking the doors. Oh, and oh yes, while also publishing a map of occupied rooms that first responders could see and know where people were in the house. It makes the smoke detectors that we have today seem like just one step above someone yelling fire. <laughs> what if your elderly father with early onset Alzheimer's wore a GPS tracker and you were automatically notified that he had deviated from his normal habits because he was lost. And you were able to go to his location and turn what could have been a catastrophe into an inconvenience. Because you are one of the 15 million Americans that have relatives that are living with Alzheimer's and you are one of the people that put 17 billion hours a year into caring for these family members. So let's deconstruct our new definition a little bit more. An evolutionary development of the internet in which we connect everyday objects, but 
just as importantly, more importantly, we make it easy to access those objects by software. We've been living in a world, in fact, where doing things with devices, wireless devices, has been the world of firmware engineers, people who have a very specific skill set, and there aren't very many of them. But what if I can create a world where anyone can write these apps? Anyone can write an app for, a, for the physical world. Not even just a software developer, but literally anyone. When I can do that, when I can connect everyday objects and make them easily accessible by software, what I get is rapid innovation, solving problems quickly, iterating on lots and lots and lots of different ways to solve the problem. And that rapid innovation is going to lead to a solving of these problems in an entirely new way. And hopefully, it will lead to some headlines like these instead of headlines that count the number of things that are connected to the internet, which as we know doesn't actually indicate any value. And hopefully, resulting in us talking about not an internet of things, but an internet of human things. Thank you.